Time waits for no one. With every tick of the clock, we get older. And inside our cells, a kind of molecular clock is ticking too, marking the inevitable process of cellular aging. I regard aging as a medical condition. It's a decline in function leading to suffering and in many cases, death. David Sinclair wants to turn back the clocks in our cells. And he believes his latest results from a series of experiments on the eyes of mice suggest it might be possible to reverse aging. In 2012, Shinya Yamanaka won the Nobel Prize for showing that you can take an adult cell, say a skin cell, grow it in a dish and put in four Yamanaka genes, Yamanaka factors we call them, and convert that adult cell into a, what we call induced pluripotent stem cell. Stem cells are like blank cell templates from which all other types of cell can develop. They're essentially the youngest a cell can be. So we know we can take an adult cell back to age zero. This is a stem cell. But if you do that in a person, you, this would turn into a tumor. So what you want to try to do, we tried to do, is to take the age of the cell to a certain point where it's young again, but not so young that it loses its identity. And we had a lot of trial and error, mostly error. Eventually, David's team found a combination of three Yamanaka factors that seemed to turn back the clock just part of the way in cells in a dish. The next step was to try it out in a living creature. But for that, they needed a way to tell if their de-aging process was working. When you damage the central nervous system in a very young animal or an embryo, it can grow back. But in an adult, it's impossible. So we took older mice and damaged their optic nerve just by pinching at the back. So normally those axons would die off and the mice would be blind. Instead, we saw with our three gene reprogramming combination, the optic nerves started to grow back and eventually did grow back all the way back to the brain. The nerves were regenerating. But that wasn't all. David thinks something even more fundamental is going on. One of the hallmarks of ageing is epigenetic change. These are changes to how genes are switched on and off. So when we're young, our epigenome is pristine. It's set with genes on and genes that are off that maintain a cell's identity. And this pattern must be maintained throughout life for that organ and that tissue to work optimally. One part of this epigenetic pattern involves chemicals called methyl groups that attach to the DNA. As an organism gets older, the pattern of methylation changes. We can use these DNA methylation patterns to make a clock, a DNA methylation clock, also known as a Horvath clock, that estimates your biological age. And when David looked at the methylation clock of the mice in his experiment, the patterns had changed. According to David, the clocks had turned back and the cells looked younger. Which told us that we weren't just protecting these nerve cells, we were literally reversing their age. Bolstered by these results, David and his team turned to more conditions associated with age. They tried the same experiment in mice that had become blind due to old age, and in mice with artificially induced glaucoma, an age-related disease that damages the cells of the retina. They gave the blind mice the three reprogramming factors and then tested their vision. We could put mice in front of a screen where lines are moving. And if a mouse is blind, it will just sit there staring. But after we treated the mice, what happened was we saw that they were starting to move their head like this in response to those lines, showing that they had got their vision back. And that, as far as we know, is the first time that's ever been possible. As before, the mice didn't just regain their vision, their cells also appeared younger according to the DNA methylation clock. Not only that, but when David's team experimentally fixed the methylation patterns, preventing them from changing, the blind mice didn't regain their vision. Which suggests to us that the clock isn't just a measure of age, it's involved in the ageing process and even in its reversal. David and his team are keen to try out the three reprogramming factors on other kinds of tissues and eventually in humans to see if they can reverse age-related conditions like glaucoma. But there's still more work to do to understand exactly how these three factors are able to make a cell functionally younger again. 
The fact that we can reset the age of a cell and make it functional again, and have the right genes turn on and off as though they were young again, implies that there's a template, a store of information that's youthful, much like a backup copy of software that we can reset. The big question really is, where is that information stored? Where is that template? How does the cell find it during this reprogramming method? And this is one of the most important questions, I think, that now needs to be solved. We don't know if the template to youth really is hidden inside each of our cells. But if David's right, perhaps a cure for ageing isn't as impossible as it might have once seemed.